Hello friends, welcome to today's operating system class and in this class we will discuss the scheduling criteria of CPU scheduling algorithm that is the important properties we should consider while designing the scheduling algorithm those are the CPU utilization and the throughput turnaround time, waiting time and response times of the given processes uh, for that scheduling algorithm. The properties of uh, scheduling algorithm here the scheduling criteria which is also called as scheduling methodology and different CPU scheduling algorithms have different properties because we are having more number of CPU scheduling algorithms and every algorithm is having its own properties and all those properties are varies from algorithm to algorithm right. So here we are having some common criteria which are used to, to compare these scheduling algorithms those are the utilization of CPU for executing all the processes and throughput, turnaround time, waiting time and response time of all the processes which are assigned for that scheduling algorithm. Let us see all those things one by one. The first criteria is CPU utilization that is we have to keep the CPU as busy as possible by scheduling more processes continuously. Okay. The uh, CPU utilization ranges from 0 to 100 percent. This is only theoretically, theoretically, but when come to practical, the utilization ranges from 40 percent to 90 percent because some process should always execute on the CPU, hence the minimum 40 percent utilization will be there, but maximum we cannot utilize 100 percent, but 90 percent utilization is possible. So, we have to increase the CPU utilization by assigning more processes continuously. The second one is throughput. Throughput is nothing but the rate at which processes are completed per unit time. Okay? That means the number of processes executed by the CPU per unit time is called as throughput. For long processes, the rate may be 1 per hour. Okay, per hour the CPU can complete only one process when come to short transactions the process may be 10 per second per second 10 processes can complete by the CPU. Okay, this is called as throughput. Throughput means the total number of processes executed per unit of time is called as throughput. The next important criteria is turnaround time. Turnaround time means how long a processor takes to execute a process this is called as uh, turnaround time that is calculation of the time gap between the submission of process and the completion of process ok. So, we are going to submit the process in the ready queue and the process will be executed in the CPU. Now, the turnaround time is finish time minus arrival time. Finish time means after completing this CPU, the time, what is the time and arrival time means when the uh, process enters into the ready queue. So, the turnaround time is finish time minus arrival time. The next one is response time. It is different from turnaround time. Okay, what is turnaround time? The time taken to complete the process is called as turnaround time. But when come to response time, the time taken to start responding from the submission time is called as response time. That is, while when the process is created that will be waited in the ready queue, then when the process is getting scheduled to the CPU for execution that is called as response time when the CPU is actually responding the process for execution. This is not the completion time but this is starting time. So, the response time which is otherwise called as starting time. Okay? So, it is calculated as the amount of time takes to start responding. Okay? The another one is waiting time. Waiting time is nothing but the sum of time period spends in the in waiting in the ready queue that is called as waiting time that is 
how much time the process will wait in the ready queue. Ready queue, then only it will start executing in the CPU. So, how much time the process will be within the ready queue is called as waiting time. Hence, waiting time which is equal to start time minus arrival time. So, with this above criteria, we need to identify which scheduling algorithm is optimum optimum algorithm. Okay, so by this uh, criteria, we need to compute which scheduling algorithm will produce maximum CPU utilization and maximum throughput. Maximum throughput means maximum number of process should be executed per unit time. Okay, and minimum turnaround time. A single process should have very minimum to time to complete its execution and minimum waiting time that is minimum time that should wait in the ready queue and minimum response time. So, within uh, quickly the process should be executed in the CPU. So, uh, which uh, scheduling algorithm would satisfy all these criteria then that particular scheduling algorithm is called as optimum scheduling algorithm. Okay. See when process come to ready queue, the process should easily that is within minimum waiting time that should be responded by the CPU. Hence the CPU utilization will get increased, the throughput will be maximized that is more number of process will be executed per unit time and turn around time. So to complete a single process it will take very minimum turn around time and minimum waiting time in the ready queue and minimum response time very quickly the process should start executing ok. So, all these criteria should be satisfied while designing a scheduling algorithm that is CPU scheduling algorithm. Up to this we have seen the important scheduling criteria for the CPU scheduling algorithms which are used to compare the properties of uh, the scheduling algorithms. Okay, the first one is CPU utilization, throughput, turnaround time, waiting time and response time. And now this is the question time. Students please write what is turnaround time. You can give your answer in the comment box. In the next class we will see what are the what is mean by scheduling algorithm and what are the different scheduling algorithms are available in CPU. Thank you.